Galena can't be the killer. Okay, now they're making all this shit up. Here. What the f is that? Meat? What? Are you kidding me? PJ's got trained gators. If what you say oh is Lord. true, Daniel, how do you plan to prove it? It's nearly been a century since the Clarksons first took control of the car. One hundred years. I always thought my legacy would live on for two. Three hundred at least. I'm gonna find the real killer and beat the living dog shit out of him. Yet it looks to me like times have changed. We ain't in the good old days no more. You understand me, boy. Yes, sir. I'm right there with Sounds you. Sounds like the director from Red I'm gonna continue what you started, sir. And make the Clarkson family strong again. First, I need to find whoever really killed Lee's and bash their fucking brains in. I saw this coming. Ever since the day Lenny left home, the town of Lucari has been cursed. We can't stop what's happening now. It's too late. It's beyond me. No. Beyond it's beyond the mind of anyone who comes from the olden days. Do you understand me now, boy? Yes, sir. Believe me, I do. I'll kill him. Just leave everything to me, Paul. Are you serious about this? Yes, sir. Right hand of God. Look right in my eyes. I ain't lying. I'm serious. I just need you to lend me some troops, sir. We need retribution right now. That's the job I've been given, and I intend to do it. Well, then, let me ask you one more time. Are you serious about this? Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm a Clarkson. All Clarksons have a job to do. Isn't that what we always say? Mm-hmm. Then I'll need an arm. Yeah. What? Well, now, you want to use my troops. I'm going to need to know whether or not you're really serious about this. Just one arm. Slide it on through that wire there. And it'll take care of it for you. Good lord. Paul. Oh. You're joking, right? Daniel, have I ever told you a single joke? Uh, no. What? If you want to become a real Clarkson, then you done got yourself a job to do. How did the how did the units know to come in here? It's not like he gave a signal. Wait, Paul, I, I get it now. You you want me to stick it in and pull it out at the last minute, right? You, you, you want to see how it like a ride to hell retribution character. There's gonna be another way. Oh man. You can't be serious, sir. Hey. Uh, I guess I'm not serious about this, Pa. I, I'll just, I'll just not do it. Let me go, goddammit! Oh, please, sir, don't do this! Like, isn't this gonna make a scene? The whole town is gonna know. shirtless guy playing sax there? Yeah! 
Let's go! I respect that! Also, this is the most, like, ragtag group of jazz musicians. Like, this is the, this is, you could make a movie about these four people trying to start a jazz band. And, like, that's the whole premise. It's just these four people who would never get along. Near nude saxophonist, old professor pianist, and then two college roommates try to make it big on the jazz scene. S! I got an S ranking. Wow. Or from in the battles, at least. Oh, no, in everything. We have Capitanos and Pulcinellas. <laughs> we, killed, we punched 15 squirrels and one wild dog. All right, now are we gonna go back to Willia? I feel like at the start of every episode is a good time to. Oh, we are Zach. Yeah. You can hear. There's another situation where I can only go forward. I'm not sad. Honestly, I can't wait. It's all I think about lately. I mean. Together again. We'll get to discuss movies, food again. Everyone around here has bad taste. They don't understand things the way we do. It's a shitty world filled with shitty Oh, that reminds me. There are movie theaters and restaurants over there, right? As soon as I get there. Playing that in 2020. I wonder if Zach is sad because the movie theaters are all closing. It also is legitimately really sad because we don't get we don't get too much of Zach in Deadly Premonition One, but he seems a little bit like kinder. Please. And a little bit. Oh, there's a fairy. All right. You just need to wait a bit longer. I still have one job left to do. I need to finish it. I have to. Or else I'd never be able to face you. Just, just give me a little more time, okay? It's sad to he see him so cynical. Also, was the beard new? We never really got a... We didn't get a huge close-up on his beard. Wait, 2019? Wasn't the first scene 2018? Is this later or is it the same day? This looks like same day to me. We're in the exact same spot. So, Lise's mother, Galena Clarkson, confessed to murdering Lise. But then immediately afterwards, she went insane. So you had no choice but to detain her. What a terribly convenient story. You were the first person to find the suspect hiding at a farm on the edge of town. And you even got her to confess to the crime, right then and there. Did anyone else get a chance to hear Galena's confession? York did. Only us. How did you even find that shack in the first place? Skeletal gentleman. Metaphysical offender profile. <laughs> Meta what? Should I know this word? <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Metaphysical offender profiling. The term appears six times in the Lucare report. <laughs> Anytime York doesn't know how to explain something, he's like, I'll just say it was metaphysical offender profiling. Yeah, they'll buy that. And 14 times in the 2010 Greenvale report. Hmm. As long as you're solving cases, the people in charge don't really care what sort of words you use. I wonder if that's the amount of dungeons. 14, that seems a little bit high, but you do... You go to the Red World pretty often, doesn't permission one. But we're different. 
You utilized a highly abnormal method to instantly hone in on a suspect. Then you did it again and again. And every time you used it, one term kept appearing in your file. I love that. He just Metaphysical explains it away with this program. dumb phrase. Mr. Morgan, would you mind explaining to us what this term means? You could try. I feel like the mustache... Oh, no. The mustache is pretty clear here. The beard seems like it was a little bit longer in the other cutscene, but probably making that up. But no matter what words we used... You'd never be able to understand. You see, it doesn't pertain to this side. Come, my fairy. Also, the, I did notice... Stop hiding back there and give them the explanation they so desire. I don't think the fairy is Emily, but she did look a little bit like Emily. <laughs> what? You're too shy? <laughs> but I'm curious where the fairy is coming from. Mr. Morgan? Mr. Morgan. Come on out. Don't be afraid. You can do it. It's okay. Is that all you have to say? Don't underestimate me, Morgan. I know you and the Clarkson share a deeper connection. Much deeper than how it appears on the surface. I need to shake him with something else that's directly connected to the Clarksons. I'm gonna jog his memory by force. The old messy letters, of course. The stack of old letters. These must be the letters that he mentioned in the report. A dragonfly mark proves it. Those letters look very old. The postmark suggests they were sent out from Louisiana. And I suspect that dragonfly mark belongs to the Clarkson family. <clears throat> Maybe. So what if it does? A stalker has been harassing Patricia Clarkson for several years now. Uh-oh. Did you know about this? Also, yeah, I didn't know if I was imagining it. Patricia Clarkson. Why is she a Clarkson? Constant silent phone calls, unmarked letters. She also spotted a suspicious figure lurking near her mansion several times. And just last week, her employees spotted a strange figure lurking in the vicinity. The day someone else coincidentally used your alias and traveled to Louisiana. I wonder if very Candy has to do with that, the mom. A lot. Lisa oh, Clarkson also reported being harassed by a stalker just before she was murdered. You're aware of this, correct? Because I didn't find any mention of this in your report. No direct connection to the case. That's what we must have thought. The visionary lies to himself. The liar only to others. Which are you? That's enough for now. This all has nothing to do with the case. Besides, there's no evidence that proves those letters are from her. Isn't that right, my fairy? That line about... Are you a visionary or a liar? That was really good. Let's bring up Greenvale again. Oh, I should have looked before I inspected. Sorry. Mr. Morgan, I noticed that several parts of this report have been redacted. For example, here. One individual's name has been erased from the key figure list. Would you mind telling me why? Someone in charge must have thought it was unimportant. Or maybe even inappropriate. Why would they think that? How should we know? We've never understood what those people do. Well, I took the liberty of trying to restore what was taken out. Normal ink was used to blot it out, so I was able to recover part of it. Here's what it says. Sapling salesman. Hmm. I am actually curious why that part would be blotted out. Like, I understand you can't explain the supernatural stuff, but, like, you'd think you would bring up yeah, the sapling salesman was involved. All the other redacted parts seem to be connected to this person. But I can't think of a single reason why this individual would need to be removed from the report. Why is he so untouchable? Him. He's nothing. We were barking up the wrong tree. 
Meaning? Can't include someone who doesn't exist in an official report, now can we? Hmm. Doesn't exist? You mean he had nothing to do with the case? <laughs> yeah, you could say that. Interesting. Someone stole Lisa's body and it's been missing for the past 14 years. I find it hard to believe that it was simply hidden in that cold storage warehouse the entire time. Why wasn't a more detailed investigation carried out? Mr. Morgan. According to you, at the beginning of this case, the victim's body was being stored in the warehouse on purpose. Is that the truth? They really put her body there alongside food and other perishables? It's in the report. No. The report only says it was stored using the most effective and shockingly inhuman method possible. If you can think of a better phrase, we're all ears. The report isn't wrong, you know. In fact, that might actually be the most accurate way of describing it. It's really not. You could just describe where it's being held. It's precise, and it's also kind of poetic, you know? Shit. I defend York and Zach being weird and writing up the reports weird, but also shut up, Simon. I do wonder if Simon's actually just well, trying to be Simon. good cop, though. We never would have taken you for a poet. Because Aaliyah is very tough, head-on, like, distrustful. And Simon, who has apparently been basically stalking Zack for the past five years or whatever, um, seems very eager to be friends with him. I wonder if that is intentional. <laughs> <laughs> right? Shut up, Simon. You two think this is a joke? Lise Clarkson's body was discovered in that cold storage warehouse after 14 long years. If you had only done a proper investigation, we probably would have found her much sooner. That poor girl. Aaliyah, didn't you just say it wasn't probably in the warehouse for all those 14 years? We still regret the fact that we never got to meet her. We're sorry from the bottoms of our hearts. I only hope it didn't happen that way by design. Will you comfort me? Thank you, my fairy. <laughs> I knew it wouldn't go that easily. Maybe I should try asking my questions in a different way. I could use Agent Jones here. Really? You think he's gonna come in handy? Films teach us all we need to know? That's ridiculous. I'd rather read a book than watch a stupid movie. Or play a stupid video game. It's bugging you, isn't it, Aaliyah? Huh? What? I get it, I get it. It's bugging me too. It's even got my heart racing a little. I mean, look at this. Nothing but DVDs. You have Tremors? Tremors 3, Tremors 4, Tremors 5, but no Tremors 2, the best one. Not a single Blu-ray in sight, just pure, unadulterated DVDs. There are a lot of blue There's cases there, are you tapes sure? Too. I don't even have a space player in my That's house. That's the first one I recognize. Whoa, look at this. Check it out. <laughs> This one's got a lot of pizza in it, remember? That is true. There's an entire character made You're of pizza. You're not wrong, Simon. There's a very large quantity of pizza in that film. 1987, directed by Mel Brooks. Man, Mel Brooks, what a The version legend. on that tape is the one we recorded back when you could catch it on cable TV. <sighs> Seriously? Damn, Morgan, that's incredible. You're really living the dream, man. I hope you both haven't forgotten that this conversation you can watch that is scene also with pizza being the hut you want. Yeah, well, maybe you should have gotten distracted by the DVDs, Aaliyah. That's the window that faces the street out front. I can tell just from the layout of his furniture. Now I'm surrounded by everything I couldn't see out there. This is a nice building. Layout isn't bad either. Whew. 
It must be rather expensive to rent a place like this in Boston. How many other rooms are there in this apartment? That room over there, your bedroom? Huh. Why so curious, Belle? It almost sounds as if you're seeing this place for the first time. Aside from the hardware shop on the first floor, every apartment in this building has the exact same layout. We're well aware that you studied the layout of this apartment before you came to see us. There's no need to act so roundabout. Just be honest. Say it. I want to see your bedroom. Well then? Doesn't mean we'll let you see it though. Let's look at Nervous Simon. Agent Jones is completely checked out. Despite the fact that we're heading deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole here. Agent Jones! <laughs> Are you paying attention? Or do you intend to waste Mr. Morgan's precious time? Uh, no. Sorry. I'm just a little tired. I'm listening. I'm listening. Take your hand out of your pocket. Didn't they teach you any manners at Quantico? Oh, uh, right. Is it bad manners to have your hand in your pocket? I guess they slipped my mind. My bad. <laughs> I'm actually kind of nervous. I'm not used to this sort of thing. Rain. Data analysis is my specialty, you know. I, uh, I'm sure I'd be able to calm down a bit if I had some... Pizza, though. Man, they really went all in on the pizza <laughs> thing, didn't they? Shameless laugh. <laughs> <laughs> the only two kinds of laughter, shameless and dark. Uh, the FBI needs to do something about their lack of personnel. I'll have to ask the questions myself. But how should I start? I like how the plot progression was, maybe I can, maybe Simon can help me. Nope. Maybe I should look back over the files and calmly reassess the situation. An elegant antique lighting fixture. And most of his other furniture is of the same quality. Why is his room such a mess then? This is why, instead of calling him a dangerous person, they've labeled him a high-functioning sociopath. Uh... Just the usual around here. No need to worry. The usual? Oh, is that supposed to be thunder? Yes. Oh, no. A strange person lives upstairs. Every now and then... He makes noise. What's strange about him? Several years ago, a woman was murdered upstairs. Her husband still lives there. Yikes! He's ex-BPD. And apparently he's still searching for the killer. But it seems like they cut all support for the investigation due to decreased funding. The team on the case wanted to keep working on it. But the suits wouldn't hear of it. <laughs> A tale as old as time. Due to his situation, perhaps. He's been making a lot more noise recently. Like you just heard. You never noticed anything, Agent Jones. Well, I did hear some loud noises every now and then. But I didn't think they were real noises from upstairs. I thought there were those fake noises you hear about in the news. I mean, look at him. It's not like he's reacting to the noise. He always just went about his business as usual for all the years I've watched him. So I just figured it was coming from the TV. You really amaze me sometimes. So far, everything checks out with the report. But there were always some parts of the report that didn't make sense. He expects me to believe he just happened to solve a case this difficult while he was on vacation? And metaphysical offender profiling? I won't let him distract me with his fancy made-up words. You can say fancy made-up terms, but to be fair, those three words are all real words. They're not made up. 
After you arrested Galena Clarkson, you had a run-in with the Clarksons. At least that's what it says in the report. What exactly happened there? Just a simple run-in, that's all. Hard cut to an all-out shootout. Nothing but a single phenomenon. Chasing hollow instances like that won't lead you closer to the truth. Truth doesn't work like that. A hollow phenomenon, which resulted in a mountain of corpses. Ooh, I don't know if that's our first confirmation. We knew it was serial killing, but mountain of corpses looks like there's going to be a lot of people. <laughs> oh, Belle. We think we finally understand what you're trying to say. But don't be so voracious. How about another cup of coffee? We've still got a long way to go, you know. <laughs> yes. It's coarsely ground, so there should only be four teaspoons per cup. No more, no less. Next, the coffee travels from the funnel to the siphon. Simon? Normally, you only do surveillance in order to gather data, correct? Hiding microphones and cameras, sifting through garbage, wiretapping, shadowing, tracing credit card histories. You'll do whatever it takes to gather data in order to prevent crimes. That's how the FBI works. Uh, well, yeah, right. Sure, yeah, all that, yeah. No reason in hiding it now, I guess. <laughs> Why do you ask? Southern Bell has adopted a very peculiar M.O. It's almost like she has a special power. Is he saying this out loud? We do know she can also use the visions mechanic, not that I've actually needed it. You've been watching us this entire time, haven't you, Bell? From that window. I don't need to answer that question. You came here on New Year's Eve, then spent 49 hours watching us until you returned to your hotel room last night. You observed us the entire time without sleep or rest. Okay, this is right after New Year's, so does that mean that it was 2018 the first scene and this is a couple days later? I, I don't know, it doesn't really matter all that much. And you only ate once, some pizza delivered by Simon. Aside from that, you never drank any water or relieved yourself. You simply sat there and continued to watch us. You have visions, too, don't you? You came here solely to hear us talk, didn't you? But then, why bother watching us for over two days beforehand? You didn't come to talk with us. You came because you wanted to see this apartment with your own eyes. And because you're already convinced of something. Isn't that right? He who fights with monsters should see to it that he himself does not become a monster. I wonder if that's Nietzsche. And if you gaze long into an abyss, the abyss also gazes into I've heard you. that line plenty of times. That also sounds like it could be Nietzsche. But I... Oh, coffee. Thank you, my fairy. If you hadn't been paying attention, this coffee would have all gone to waste. The pus in our brains. It really has a way of interfering with our lives. Friggin' delicious! I kinda thought I was gonna shit myself for a second there. What? Come on, Elaine, take a sip. It's coffee. Trust me. I'm not exaggerating here. I... I don't believe it. 
It's uh, better than any coffee I've ever tasted. It's turkey, strawberry jam, and cereal coffee. Coffee is a sacred drink. I call it sinner's coffee. Coffee saved us. If not for its oracle, we would be on the other side right now. So I never forget to pay my respects to coffee. Especially at critical moments like this. Big black cumulonimbus clouds are in the sky. And that sound. Thundersnow is coming. I've never in my life experienced thundersnow. I still believe it's a myth. I don't believe if you've if you've experienced thundersnow before, I don't believe you. Prove it. 